sixth graders, it's Mr. Gardell. Glad to be back with you. Hey, we're going to focus and continue focusing on the Ojibwe. And today's lesson for Tuesday, March 2nd, particularly focuses on the seasons of the Ojibwe. You should have in the past learned about the seasons of the Dakota. What I want you to be thinking about today as you go through this lesson is think about how do the Ojibwe compare to the Dakota through these four seasons and how do the Ojibwe differ from the Dakota through these four seasons? Because remember, every day you're continually adding to your Venn diagram of comparing and contrasting the early Dakota to the early Ojibwe. All right, so what we're going to get started with is we're going to get started with our online Northern Lights textbook. And I'm specifically on page 4.06. And I'm just going to start reading the section titled People of the Woods and Water. And that's going to lead us into the first season, spring, which I'm going to model for you and help you to get started on understanding what the Ojibwe were doing during each of these four seasons. And then you're going to finish the remaining three seasons. People of the, water, of the Woods and Water. The Ojibwe migrated through lands of towering pines, blue lakes, and clear streams. As they moved from place to place, they found what they needed in the natural world around them. Where they lived, what they did, and what they ate changed with the seasons. They valued giving back whenever they took something from the natural world, so they offered gifts of tobacco and food and thanks for the animals and plants they harvested and shared. I'm going to just pause for a second before I continue reading. I'm not going to stop and read about this section titled Fishing, but I would encourage you to watch the video about ice fishing. It's very interesting. All right, let's continue with spring. Spring. Melting snow and ice marked the beginning of the spring, called Zigwon in Ojibwe. As the weather turned warmer, Ojibwe families packed their belongings onto sleds and toboggans and left the protective pine forest where they had spent the winter. They traveled to where the maple trees grew. This was the sugar camp where the Ojibwe turned sap from the maple into sugar and syrup. And I'm going to stop right there and we're going to watch a quick video about make, making maple sugar. Today, people from many cultures enjoy maple syrup. American Indians, like the Dakota and Ojibwe, have been making maple sugar for centuries. This film shows two Ojibwe families making maple sugar near Lake Mille Lacs, Minnesota in 1939. First, a hole was drilled so a spout could be inserted into the tree. Sap dripped from the spout into buckets made of metal or birch bark. The sap was collected, poured into kettles, and boiled for many hours. Lots of wood was needed to keep the fire going. As the sap boiled down, it became maple syrup. The syrup was tasted to determine if it had cooked long enough. When it was ready, the syrup was quickly ladled into molds, where it hardened into maple sugar. If the syrup was boiled a little longer, it became granulated when worked with a large spoon. 40 gallons of sap make one gallon of maple syrup, or one pound of maple sugar. Children look forward to getting a taste. All right. So I'm going to continue reading paragraph two. But as I continue reading, I want you to think about that first paragraph and what are the main or central ideas of that first paragraph and keep that in mind because eventually we're going to move on to writing down those main or central ideas of this entire season. The journey to the sugar camp was usually an exciting and happy event. Families who had not seen each other all winter joined together and continued on their way. They swapped stories and marveled at how much their children had grown. As friends and relatives reunited, they began the hard work of preparing enough food and supplies for the next winter. Once the families arrived at the sugar camp, they repaired existing lodges and built new ones. Some were used as homes and others as workplaces. While the men went out to hunt, the women began the process of making maple sugar, which they called Zinzi Ba Kwa. They went through the maple grove, cutting a gash in the trunk of each tree. Then they inserted a wooden spout into each gash. Before long, sap began dripping from the spout and into a birch bark container. 
Then came the job of turning the sap into sugar. From sunrise to sunset, boys and girls ran back and forth delivering containers of sap to the sugar house. The sugar house was a large structure made of wooden poles and covered with bark. Inside the children, inside the children poured the sap into kettles set over burning fires. As the sap boiled down, it turned into sugar. As a reward for their work, the children were allowed to eat some of the sugar. The older women stored the remaining sugar in birch bark containers for later use. The sugar would provide energy throughout the year. Another important springtime springtime task was making canoes. First, the Ojibwe constructed a frame from cedar, a strong but lightweight wood. Then they wrapped birch bark around the bottom and sides of the frame and sewed it tight using twine made of spruce roots. Lastly, they sealed the seams in the bark with spruce gum. Women did the same of this, did some of this work, while men did other parts. Young boys and girls helped too, learning the craft from their elders. And there's an excellent picture of the Ojibwe building a birch bark canoe. And in thinking of birch bark canoes specifically from the Ojibwe, think about what the Dakota's canoes were originally. Those heavy, hollowed out log canoes. These birch bark canoes that the Ojibwe were building and are building in this photo really were much more lightweight and easier to portage from waterway to waterway. Here's a picture that I really don't want to address right now because it's going to get into summer and winter. But what you're going to do after we finish with spring is you're going to move on starting with page 4.11 or 4.11 and continue into summer and then fall and obviously winter. But we're going to go back into the week of March 1st, excuse me, through the 5th. And what I want you to see is what you're going to do. And you should be doing the same thing right now. And in fact, what I want you to do right now is to pause the video. All right, now that you are at this spot, I'm going to click on Seasons of the Ojibwe. And I'm going to open this assignment up in Kami. And when you think back to what I read regarding spring, again, think about what the main or central ideas were of not only each paragraph, but of spring in general. And so what I'm going to do is click on T for text box. I'm going to stick with the 24 font size. I'm going to stick with the color black. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start typing my um, notes onto this activity, learning activity called Seasons of the Ojibwe. Now I'm going to use bullet points. So I'm going to go up here and click on bullet point. And then I'm going to type in traveled to sugar camps. When we take notes, you do not, I repeat, you do not need to write in complete sentences. I would always encourage you to use bullet points and try to keep each bullet point, if you can, to seven words or less. All right, let's continue. Women made maple sugar. What else was going on in this time? The lodges were repaired, so repaired lodges. Lodges were then built, if needed. The men were off hunting. And birch bark canoes were being made. Oops, can't spell today. There we go. So those are my notes for spring. Obviously, you can copy that information down onto your paper. I'm just kind of messing around with sizing this up so you can see it easier. There we go. I think I found a good place for it. There we go. Now the lines all fit and match well. And so you're going to do the same exact thing that I did is read about the season, think about what the main or central ideas are of that season, and then come back to your cami notes for Seasons of the Ojibwe and do exactly what I did. Think about at least four main or central ideas or what was occurring during each of those seasons and capture that onto this learning activity. And then what you're going to ultimately want to do is continue to add. Let me go back to our Tuesday. 
nope, didn't want to do that. Go back to our Tuesday, March 2nd. And then what you're going to ultimately want to do is number five, is add to the Venn diagram after you complete the seasons of Ojibwe notes in Schoology. Keep adding to that Venn diagram, and then ultimately you're going to complete the seasons of the Ojibwe learning activity, which is right here. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Have a fantastic day.